Mm. Yeah, just watch yourselves there, detectives. Triple O caller reported the fire at 3.30am. By the time the fire he's got here, it was out. Burned for less than five minutes. That would be close. The skin's all charred through and the body fat on the front is mostly gone. Petrol? Were, yeah, pending tests, but there was very little use. Once the uh, fire had consumed itself, there was uh, nothing to keep it going. Most of the back and the feet aren't very burnt. No shoes? No shoes. You wouldn't do that for a pair of shoes, surely? No, you certainly wouldn't. Look, I've managed to locate here some uh, some drag marks that weren't obliterated by the fireman's size 10 boots, so I'll have to run comparison tests, but they look to me like heel scrapes. All right? Now, what I reckon has happened, the body has been dragged a long way down this alleyway here, around the corner, through, right through here to its present position. So the body was unconscious before being brought here in satellite? You mean no, there's no evidence of fire fume inhalation, so they weren't breathing when the fire started. The skull's cracked from the heat of the fire, but there's a pronounced indentation. Could be from a blunt instrument. Fisk? No, well, there's nothing around here that, that fits the bill, but look, I'm not surprised. I am fairly certain that the murder happened elsewhere. It's not the best way to get rid of a corpse. Altogether, a pretty amateurish attempt at cremation. So our murder victim is female. It's hard to tell from the charred genitalia, but the pelvis shape confirms it. Any idea of her age, Tootsie? Oh, just give me a minute. What about time of death? Well, it's impossible to take body temperature readings after a fire, but there's no sign of decay on the unburnt flesh. Less than a few days then, Tootsie. Can you tell if there's been any sexual assault? No, you'll have to wait till a full autopsy later, but don't hold your breath. She's probably a teenager. Certainly no more than 20. Yes, well, she was wearing uh, designer jeans. Label's still intact. You know, there's no wallet, there's no small change. So if our victim had any money, she hasn't got it in... Hang on, hang on, what's this? Earrings? Mmm. With clasps. Oh, there we go, one of them's broken. That's why it was in the back pocket. Well, it could be, detective, could be. Oh, what have you done? The tattoo. Is it a hornet? Wasp? Something? Mm, it's relatively fresh. What, last what? night fresh? Oh, I don't I'm an expert. But I'd, I'd say a few weeks. That's a four colour job. That's top shelf. That's good. Aha. Uh -huh. Now that should help the detective. It's a bus pass. Melissa Hindwood. Someone made this nice and easy. Good morning. Good morning. Can I help you? Mr. Hindwood? Yes? I'm Detective Vance. This is Detective Hayden. Oh, what's happening? Do you have a daughter, Melissa Hindwood? Yes, I do. Is she all right? Oh, hello. Well, these people are detectives. I take it Melissa isn't home, sir? She stayed at a girlfriend's overnight. I'm very sorry to bring you this news, but um, the body of a young girl was found in the city last night. No. There was a bus pass. No. No. Perhaps no, no, we no. should talk inside. It can't be. She's at Claudine's. She's always at Claudine's. Claudine came to school for him. She, Melissa stays there Friday nights. They go to tennis together in the morning. We'd know about it if there was a problem. We're having trouble identifying the victim. She was carrying Melissa's bus pass and these earrings. Christmas present. What happened? An accident? I'm afraid not, sir. Look, I want to see this body. Then we can be sure. Yes, we should. It was a fire. She's at Claudine's. <laughs> no, I'm going to find Claudine. Wait, Chloe. There was something else. There was a, a tattoo on the shoulder blade. Tattoo? <sighs> Oh, Melissa doesn't have a tattoo. It can't be her. Melissa would never scar her body with one of those. Look at her, she has perfect skin. A tattoo. We'd know about her. Well, it was quite a recent one. She doesn't have a tattoo anywhere on her body. She is perfect. I will call Claudine. Let's clear this thing up. Then you can find out who this poor girl really is. Oh, thank God. 
So was she with you yesterday afternoon? Yes, Melissa and I came straight here from school yesterday, same as usual. And all last night? Yeah. I'm sorry you missed her. She left for tennis a while ago. She had a lesson with Mr Delaney. I'm running late. She'll be at the courts by now for sure. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Claudine. Yeah, Melissa must have lost her bus pass and earrings. Or maybe they were stolen. It wouldn't be the first time things have disappeared from school. Or from the change rooms at tennis. Uh, could we get the address of those tennis courts, please? Yes. We'll have a talk to Melissa, see if she can tell us where she lost her things. All right. Then, uh, Melissa didn't show either. She's your friend. You should know what she gets up to. Excuse me, sir. You Peter Delaney? Yeah. Detective Hayden. Detective Vance. We're from Homicide. Could you point out Melissa Hindwood to us, please, sir? Uh, no, I can't. She didn't turn up this morning. Not like her at all. Why? What's happened? When did you see her last, Mr Delaney? Oh... Wednesday afternoon. She has a lesson after school. You should talk to a friend, Claudine. She's looking for her too. Claudine Kent. When Melissa's mum called, I just covered for her, that's all. Well, we've all covered for people. But we'll, um, we'll need to know the truth now. When did you last see Melissa? Yesterday, about 4.30 after school. She was off on a date. She often goes on dates on Friday nights. Who was that with? Do you remember what she was wearing? School uniform. A blue tunic, kind of short, but she had stuff to change into. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you raise the alarm when she didn't come home last night? She never comes home. I lie for her if her old's called a check, like today. Are her parents quite strict? They don't understand Melissa at all. There's an awful lot they don't know about her. Claudine, you ever seen this tattoo before? Sure. Where did you get that? We're investigating a homicide, Claudine. Are you absolutely sure about the tattoo? I held her hand while she had it done. It's Melissa's. So you last saw Melissa at 4.30 yesterday afternoon when she went off to meet a boy. Her parents hassled her badly over the guy a few weeks ago. You won't tell them too much. Claudine, if you know his name, the boyfriend might have something to do with what's happened to Melissa. Everyone calls him Finn. Melissa was seeing him last night, every Friday night. Do you know his full name? Duncan Finlay. They've been on for a few months. Melissa thinks she loves him and Finn, he's got it bad. And her parents didn't approve of Finn, eh? Finn's a drummer with a garage band. Right. So her parents don't know about the boyfriend and they also don't know about her tattoo? No, she went for it about two months ago at a tattoo parlour. Ratatats, it's called. Melissa knows her old to go ballistic when they see it. That's why she had it done. Can I go now? I've got to get back. Uh, Claudine, why the uh, insect? It's a bee. Melissa's name means bee. She's been wrapped with them since she found out about a year ago. Cutting out pictures, drawing them. She's always so full on about things. Bees one month, Finn the next. When we were ten it was Care Bears. You've been friends for a long time. We've been friends always. Don't 
Duncan Findlay, we're investigating the disappearance of Melissa Hindwood. Can you tell us what you were doing last night? Yeah, I was in the city, just bumming around. Mm -hmm. Were you with someone? Yeah, about 10,000 other people. I was in the city. Anyone you knew? Did I talk to? We're told you're playing a rock band. Sure. Did you have a gig last night? <laughs> Look, you're a crappy band with a great drummer. We don't get much work. You're the great drama, right? What time did you get home? About 11. My grand will confirm that. My car makes enough of a racket. What were you doing in the city? <sighs> Had a date. Unless it didn't show. And um, what time were you supposed to meet? About 6.30. I waited at a town hall for an hour. Do you meet Melissa every Friday? We hang out, go back to my place, you know, grand school. And the Claudine Kent covers for you. For Melissa, yeah. Why don't you ask her? I mean, Melissa tells her everything. She's gone home with some other guy. Colin Eden, no, right? Was Melissa seeing somebody else, Finn? I don't know. She's fantastic. It's gonna happen. Get this. Did you and Melissa have a fight last night, Finn? No, I didn't see her. She's dead, isn't she? Are you sure it's her? She was badly burnt, Finn. Not formally identified. But the tattoo indicates that it is your girlfriend. Both kids have ID'd the B. We'll have to break the bad news to the Hindwoods. Again? Uh, don't put the parents through the ringer any more than you have to. It's possible that half a dozen girls at Melissa's school could have copied that tattoo. What, battalions of schoolgirls with bees on their back? We are all young and foolish ones, right? Now, she's lost a figure, but that'll happen to a girl when she's over 40. Okay. Well, I'm going to check out Rattacats. Can someone else do the other tattooists in the area? Well, Dee speaks the language, don't you, Dee? I'll take the boyfriend home, talk to his deaf grandmother, see if she can back up his alibi. Look, tell him to wait till he's outside before he lights up. Right. Inspector, I, I blew up the photo on the bus pass to help with the door knock. Someone must have noticed a good-looking kid like that. Yeah, those teeth have paid off some orthodontist Volvo over the years. Sir? That tat's held up well. She had some ID, you know. 19 years old, it said. How long ago was this? Oh, it'd be two or three months, I suppose. I remember her pretty well. Good-looking girl. She came in with a friend. Is this the girl? I'd say probably yes. She brought a drawing in. Wanted me to execute a bee on that perfect skin of hers. Uh, do you do many bee tattoos? No way. It was her own design. A one-off. Wish I had, though. Okay, good. Thank you. Death Heads and Jolly Roger. Done them a million times. Tottenkopf to the Germans. The Nazis had an SS division call that. Bloody Nazis, eh? Gets a person down. I can imagine. That'd look good on you. I'll think about it. Thanks. Two friends have confirmed that Melissa does have a tattoo, and that tattoo is quite unique. I told you she wouldn't do something like that to herself. I'm sorry, we can't make this any easier for you. Okay, so how did this happen? I mean, do you have any idea who's responsible? Uh, we're interviewing people and trying to build a picture of Melissa's movements after school yesterday, Mr. Hindwood. We know that, that she was last seen at 4.30. She must have been struck on the head sometime after that. The, um, the fire was reported at 3.30 this morning. Yeah, what about Claudine? I mean, she, she was there, wasn't she? She was at Claudine's. Schoolgirl conspiracy, I'm afraid. Melissa's been meeting a boy on Fridays. Oh, the Finley kid? <laughs> Little bastard. I warned him. I told Melissa she's not ready for any of that. He's made a statement, sir. A statement? What did he say? What happened? He said that Melissa didn't turn up for the date. He bashed it. Did he rape my little girl? Mr. Heimwood, we're exploring all avenues, sir. What do you want from us? We want her help. 
Yes, anything. Uh, we'll need a recent photograph of Melissa. And also, if you could identify the shoes she was wearing. We're missing the shoes. Uh, school shoes are... Are those black, clumpy things that kids like so much? But she had good joggers, too, for changing into it, Claudine's. OK, thank you. Uh, we, we'll also need the name of Melissa's dentist. Dentist? We need the um, dental x-rays to formally identify the body. <laughs> Thanks for putting me in it. Well, what happened last night? My grand went burgo and did it. What do you reckon? You saw Melissa in the morning. Yeah, for about five minutes. You'll be okay. You must have other girls. It was only Melissa. You should forget about her. Melissa liked men. She loved me. Sure. But I knew Melissa a lot longer than you did. And better than you did. She wasn't some lovesick handbag. Just ask Peter Delaney. It's true. I saw them together. Melissa even got into his truck a couple of times, and we know what he uses that for. Was he here last night? Who the hell are you, the boyfriend? You and her in that tank of yours. Listen, I didn't have anything to do with her. That's a crock. Trust me, kid. The coaching's in tennis sailing, okay? If I wanted her, she'd be mine. The flammable liquid was indeed petrol. This is leaded petrol. Now, we could infer from that that our killer drives an older model car. have to be pre-1986. Pre-1986, that mm. narrows it down a bit. That's really good, Fisk. Now, have you got anything useful? Could have. A tuft of wool fibres recovered from the unburnt clothes on the body. What, from a jumper? No. Nope. Warp and weft. Yes, in this fabric, the weft yarns travel from selvage to selvage, interlacing the perpendicular warp yarns. What? It's a woolly rug, I think. A woolly rug. The warp yarns are uh, interwoven at the end to create a sort of a... You know, the the dangly bits at the end. Yeah. A tartan car blanket. Yes, now I believe that our body was wrapped in one of these before being dumped and burnt. A tartan car blanket, you say? That's it. Thank you. Where are you off to? I know where to find one. Mr Delaney. What happened to your face? Some psycho kid just attacked me for no reason. Melissa's boyfriend. Do you mind opening up the rear of your vehicle, sir? No problem. Why? Just open the door, please, sir. your car blanket? Yeah. We'd like you to come down to Homicide, sir, answer some questions relating to the death of Melissa Hine. Which one's Melissa's locker? The second one. This one? Uh-huh. There won't be much in there. Delaney said he hasn't seen her since Wednesday. That's her tennis gear for this morning, I guess. Mm -hmm. This looks like her school uniform. What's that doing here? 
She was wearing it yesterday. I remember the pen leaking. So she must have come here to change after she left you at 4.30? Strange, Peter Delaney, mister. Do you have a locker, Claudine? Yeah. Do you mind if I have a look? be real valuable one day when I'm famous. Oh, what else you got in there? Be snitch and wand, he's next. Claudine? I sort of like bees too. Great sound system, party supplies laid on, extra padding in the back. Quite the vehicle, Mr Delaney. I get away in it on my days off. What, into the bush? Yeah. I bet those contraceptives come in handy, eh? Those girls you coach, they look pretty young. They're all seniors. Any of them ever get into the vehicle, you know, for sex? Very, very occasionally. Were you having an intimate relationship with Melissa Hindwood, sir? No. Let's just say, uh, I was standing in a queue. Did she ever get into the vehicle? Once. She had a drink, didn't go beyond that. The thing is, uh, Melissa knew the effect she had on men. She liked to play up a bit. What, she liked to flirt, did she? Yeah, Melissa was, uh, she was something special. She was good looking, sure, and, uh, just good to be around. Men noticed her. She loved that. Which men? Strangers, even. Sometimes when she was playing, I'd see them stop outside the courts just to watch. Young guys, old guys. Mr Delaney... How often did Melissa get into the van with you? Just the once, I think. Maybe twice. Yesterday afternoon? No. Uh, I mean, I can't be sure. You, you can't be sure? Local police have a witness who saw Melissa get out of your vehicle late yesterday afternoon. But how can that be, Mr Delaney? You said you hadn't laid eyes on her since Wednesday, sir. Hey, why are you lying to us? No, I, I just didn't think it mattered. It doesn't look good. Do you give her alcohol? No, 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 no. We talked. Uh, her parents were getting up a nose. When was this? Around six o'clock. She had to rush off. Said she had to see her bloody boyfriend. We always liked the same things, so we stuck. What, the same, um, same hobbies, music, that sort of thing? Yeah. Same boys? We were on the debating team together. We both like words. We used to play Scrabble on Friday nights. Till she started seeing Finn. I don't think Melissa and Finn ever played Scrabble. She was loving hormones. Finn was like a puppy with her. Melissa wasn't so keen. She wasn't thinking this is it. Finn was just practice, but she loved him a bit. Did she have other boyfriends? Not this week, but Melissa knew there were lots of other guys out there. Like Peter Delaney? Maybe. Peter Delaney's looking a little bruised at the moment, Claudine. Yeah. What do you know about that? Finn's mad. He heard a rumour. About Delaney? And Melissa. She got into Delaney's car, the Passion Palace. And who told Finn about that? Did you think he'd get that mad? I guess. Jealousy makes people do dumb things. Do you think Delaney's involved? Is that why you hit him? I don't know. Maybe. Did you play tennis with Melissa? No. I watch her practice sometime. She's scared of folks that see me. Well, she's pretty young. You can't blame the parents too much. Make the laugh. Happy. What's their problem? It's a mum and dad thing, you know. Goes with the job. Do you think I could borrow that? It'll help. On you. Melissa could have had any guy she wanted. 
she chose you. Some guy would have come along. Someone older. Someone with money. It's bound to leave it sooner or later. Yeah, well, the colours are a close match. Let's see if we can ace the tennis coach, eh? Fisk, have you got anything on the um, on the clothes we found in Melissa's locker? They're expensive now, these Can't shoes. The ball. Oh, I'm not touching them. They're in a bag. Right, let's have a look at these fibres then, eh? Right, Delaney says he and Melissa are only in the front seat. Now, if our fibres match his fibres, he's lying. Again? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. They're from different sheep, aren't they? They're from different species. I will wager that Delaney's blanket is made from alpaca... Wool. This is not the, uh, the guilty rug, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alpaca, that's the, the one that looks like a llama, isn't it? Gee, they're, they're remarkable animals. They have sex twice a day if given the chance. And suit this Delaney guy by the looks of it. Mm, suit me, do. Melissa inspired obsessive reactions in people. Obsession's a good beginning for a motor. There isn't enough to hold the coach on. Finn's capable of lashing out. I mean, there's enough hurt and anger there. What's his alibi like? Well, his grandmother thinks she heard him come in by 11. She also thinks the Beach Boys are a bad influence on the lad. She's probably right. <laughs> so he's our best bet, then. Mm. I wouldn't rule out the parents. Parts of their house are a shrine to the girl. If you'd like any help... with the funeral... You made any plans yet? No. You should write a book. A book? Raising great kids. Happy kids. Yeah, yeah, 17 and never been kissed. Except if you can, Dad. What the hell is this? Get out of my house. I just thought we should... You were still seeing her, you bastard. Will. I told you to keep away from her, but no. No, thanks to you... Nothing to do with me. Thanks to you, she was out on the street last night, and that's... Get out. I just thought we should talk. A confession? Get the hell out! No, no, Will, leave it. <laughs> What is it with bees today? You did one for a friend of mine. I liked it a lot. Ah, right you are. How is your friend? How's the tat wearing? Hers was a girl bee. I'd like mine to be a boy. Thought all bees were girls. Not all. Ah, oh, sorry. You're underage, hey? Please, it's really important to me. Just here. You could get me into a lot of trouble. Come on. Sorry to intrude again. Uh, may I spend a few minutes in Melissa's room? Yeah, of course. Come in. find anything in there. I've been through it. I bet you have. Look, you hated the idea of Finn too when we caught them together that time. What if I did? Melissa was growing up and you couldn't stop it. She was my little girl. Finn was part of that. 
much, and I suppose that bloody awful tattoo was part of growing up too, was it? The tattoo was a challenge. Right, to everything we ever did for her. She was daring you to find it. Daring you to get into the shower with her again and find oh, it. Oh, God's sake. Melissa wasn't your little girl anymore. And you knew that better than anyone. Thank you. Hmm. You know, when I was at school, if a girl turned up wearing these, she'd be sent to the nearest building site to return to Bricky's labourer. Labourer wouldn't be able to afford them these days. Well, it's odd, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a fashion thing. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it's, it starts off as something practical, becomes a fashion item, prices go through the roof, happens all the time. Aren't you good at that autopsy? Yes, I am. They're not right, those shoes. this idea out of the way first, all right? No, don't jump now. We'll need a warrant and form will never come at it. All right, look, I'll meet you there, okay? Don't jump now. I'll call you back. Oh, right. uh, no, no. Look, I've got uh, dental x-rays. I've got to get them in. Sea girl this morning. That's right. It's no fillings. Some impacted wisdom teeth. It looks nasty, doesn't it? Yes. My goodness, that's not Melissa Hindwood. Come on, Tess, come on. Steve, if you want to tell me what's going on, I'll tell you in the car. Come on. Very 
That's where he's hit her. We still don't even know who she is, do we? And I would say that she's fallen dead there. Probably dressed her in Melissa's clothes first. Yeah, putting the bus pass in a pocket, of course. Hang on, there we go. The mysterious missing joggers. There they are. Get in and get them, will you, Dee? Yeah. You see, I told you. Melissa had small feet. Those shoes we had back at the lab were too small for the body we had. Car blanket. Hey. Hello. Murder weapon. Hey guys, take a look at this. Looks like human bones to me. Yeah. Oh, Excuse me, detective. All right, D, get it. You? Have a very strong feeling we'll be digging up the floor in here before too long. She floated into my shop. Asked me to tattoo her skin with a bee. She still has the skin of a child, soft, elastic, giving. Don't often get the chance. I had to rest my hands on that girl. Too much ugliness in my life. Too many young punks turning their skin into a neo-Nazi statement. Did you act alone in this? Oh, yes. I planned the moment carefully. I've been waiting for my Melissa for a long time. Practicing. I grabbed a street kid. Kylie something. She looked a bit like my Melissa. And you gave her the same bee tattoo? I had to wait till it aged. Gave me the chance to watch Melissa. I found out what she got up to on Friday nights. And when did you abduct Melissa? After she left that tennis place yesterday. What happened then? I took her home to the shop. I took her clothes off. I made the other one put them on. Kylie. Then I hit her. Did you kill her, Kevin? I wouldn't burn anybody alive. Even a nothing like Kylie. Then you torched the body. I had to give you a Melissa to put in the ground. Or you'd keep looking. Her parents, that boyfriend, They'd never stop. But nobody's going to miss Kylie. Melissa. I know I'm going to jail. But do you think I could just touch her again? Just once? Just a hand. Good. Not exactly happening. Mm, Friday night's at home for a while, I reckon. Malcolm, um, the body was half burnt for a reason. He wanted to make sure we saw the tattoo, which was the strongest pointer to Melissa. Yeah, the other pointer was the bus pass. Well done, team. Thanks. But Tessa, mm -hmm. don't you ever go on alone again. Well, we've still got this murder victim, Kylie. What happens now? Well, I checked with some contacts on the street. One person remembers a kid called Kylie. Do you have a surname? Nope. Oh, that's a good start. I hope the tattooist was wrong about her not being missed. Yeah. Well, she'll be missed. Even street kids have their mates. So what do you reckon? Missing persons going back what? Ooh, five years? Yeah, for a start. What can I do to help? B, you can do the A to G's. I'll take the Z's. Uh -huh. Give me some more. 